Ray, why don't you tell us a little bit about Ambleside and particularly the challenges of Lake District Ministry? Uh, well, as most of you will know, the uh, Lake District is an, an idyllic part of the world, and I suspect that some of you will have been part of the 15.5 million people who visited last year. Uh, if you haven't, please do come, and come to Hope Church. You'll have a very warm welcome. Um, but behind the idyllic facade of the Lake District, uh, we have in Ambleside approximately 2,500 local residents, less than half a percent are churchgoers and of that half a percent we're not quite sure who the Lord's people really are. Tourism is a big part of our economy but so is farming and with them comes all sorts of difficulties. There's a great deal of rural poverty, a great deal of despair and addictions amongst the local people and being a rural community of course we're all scattered across uh, the, 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 the area that we cover. And that means that um, all of my under 30s, all five or six of them, don't live in Ambleside, so they come to our church. We also have a large immigrant population because of the, the, the girls and guys who come to work at the hotels. That's been put on hold for a couple of years due to COVID, and now, of course, they're coming back. So the challenges for the, uh, the disinterested and the transient population, because we have a very large second home issue in the Lake District and in and around Ambleside in particular. So the challenges for the disinterested and the transient are really to meet the needs of those local people with their rural poverty and their uh, addictions, uh, the ability to reach the local school and the university campus uh, with about eight or 900 students on there. And then for the many visitors who pass by every year, the challenge is that we have limited resources and I'm on, I'm on my own. Thanks, Ray. That's really helpful just to get that kind of insight. And Simon, just put your mic up to your, up to your mouth, uh, gents. But that partnership you have, obviously you're not that far apart, but it's not inevitable that churches that are very close to each other uh, will connect or maybe know very much about each other. We see that in lots of places where even a mile can almost seem to be uh, a huge gulf. So how did the connection or the partnership that you now have with Ambleside come about? Because maybe just tell us obviously a bit about Par Street, what kind of size of church that is relatively. Yeah, so uh, Par Street's a, a church of about 180 to 200 um, and about a year ago, um, Ray got in touch with us and asked us for help. Uh, I have to be honest, I didn't really know uh, that uh, the church in Ambleside existed. It looks more like a house uh, than a church. Um, but we agreed uh, to help uh, with the church. One of the things we'd noticed as a church is that there was a real lack of gospel preaching uh, churches within the lakes. And so that was an area that we were already uh, looking at as a church and so it, it seemed like a real God-given opportunity uh, to partner together uh, and so that started we helped uh, with preaching uh, for a few uh, months um, and uh, got to know each other as well uh, we got on well uh, which was good uh, but, but more importantly uh, we shared a desire to see the gospel uh, to go uh, to the Lake District um, and so from September um, Par Street has given me uh, to Hope Church Ambleside uh, for two and a half days. So that's a big sacrifice uh, from the church family uh, at Par Street. Uh, but we think it's really important as a church uh, to, to encourage uh, gospel work uh, in this really needy area. Uh, so I'm helping uh, with the preaching, uh, but also helping Ray and the church uh, think about how we move forward in seeing the gospel going uh, to the people of Ambleside. Yeah. So there's a, there's a partnership there, which is very kind of hands-on in a sense. You know, it's very physical in the sense that, you know, actually you've been seconded uh, to work with the church. And I guess that is an option because obviously geographically you're relatively kind of nearby. What's been the impact so far, do you think, of that partnership for yourself and the folks there? Well, extremely positive. I mean, I've been labouring there for 18 years on my own. So it has been very lonely and very difficult mm. and very limiting because I have limited skills as a lay person. Um, but having uh, Paul and the team, and Simon in particular, 
uh, coming on board has been very, very positive because he brings a real youthful enthusiasm. He brings a great deal of mm. experience, even though he's still very young. Uh, he's got a great deal of experience and he's really uh, connected with our young folks. Uh, they really connect with him. Uh, he comes in with fresh eyes to look at things. And I've told him uh, nothing is sacrosanct. You know, it's all on the table. It's all up for discussion. And so he's not backwards and coming forwards in mm. making suggestions <laughs> and challenges for us to do things a little differently. But I think one of the most positive things is to realize that we're not alone. I'm not alone. Mm. And we made the connection uh, through FIEC members, strangely enough, the late Peter Lewis, who just died a few months back, and uh, Richard Underwood. Uh, both of them guided me to... Paul and his team in Kendall, and out of um, their generosity from Paul and the team and the elders, we have Simon, and he has made a big impact uh, already. So, uh, And it's also the friendship, and it's the companionship, and it's the, the fellowship in the things of God that have really, really encouraged me. Thanks, Ray. And last word to you, Simon. We've talked about the mutual enrichment of these kind of partnerships. Uh, how, how is being involved in that partnership, being seconded in that way, kind of just helped you personally, do you think, in your own ministry development? Uh, yeah, so it's uh, obviously given me uh, more of an insight into to leading uh, a church and, and making decisions uh, on those fronts. But, uh, but also, I think um, it's been a, a fantastic opportunity for me uh, as I came in just to think what should be uh, central uh, to what we do as church. Uh, it's been fantastic to have a church uh, in Ambleside that is so open to change. It, it's very much felt like a blank canvas um, so, so the question for me has been kind of what should be front and centre? Um, and I've just found it really helpful uh, to be uh, encouraged and reminded that God's word um, needs to be uh, front and centre uh, in everything uh, that we do. Um, and that's just been uh, so helpful for me in seeing that actually um, it's the gospel that is going to transform us uh, as a church uh, to be uh, loving uh, one another, uh, to be loving God and to be uh, loving the people of Ambleside. And it's the gospel that the people of Ambleside so desperately need to hear. And so just coming into that context and being reminded of that has been so helpful in laying a foundation for ministry for me.